<laughs> you don't have to have two Israel. You don't have to have an Israelite mother to be called an Israelite. That's stupid, and that's debunked all over the Bible. We could go to a laundry Rehoboam, Rehoboam, Rehoboam. And Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, reigned in Judah. Rehoboam was forty and one years old when he began to reign, and he reigned seventeen years in Jerusalem, the city which the Lord did choose out of all the tribes of Israel to put his name there. And his mother's name was Nama and Ammonitus. And he throw in uh, Rehoboam uh, set on the throne and his mama was uh, uh, an Ammonite. <laughs> well, when you look at the history, King David, he owned all that. The land of Moab, uh, Ammon. So Rehoboam's mother was an Ammonite, brother. She, she was an Ammonite from the land of Ammon. But no, 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 no. I, I, I researched it last night. I researched last night, and I have a book of maps, and I also check other maps <laughs> that they own that land, just like the hills of Mo. Ah, your brother married concubines, brother. They don't have too many concubines in the scripture, and it mentions their children, brother. Okay, come on, now. come on, man. We, 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 listen. One thing. Let me say that. I'm a group, I will rock with something that that's in the script or factual, but I'm not gonna make stuff up because I got a a a, a, a mindset geared to this way. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm just saying for your own good, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like that's a fact, bro. And also Rehoboam, who Solomon had with an Ammonitess woman, right? What are we gonna read about now? Now Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, reigned in Judah. Rehoboam was 41 years old when he began to reign. He reigned 17 years in Jerusalem, the city which Yahweh did choose out of all the tribes of Israel to put his name there. And his mother's name was Naama and Ammonitus. Rehoboam's son is Naama and Ammonitus. Let's see, are you good guys going to try to make her an Israelite too? You can't do it. Here's why. 1 Kings 11 and 1. But King Solomon loved many strange women, non-Israelites, together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites. So this is an Ammonite woman. This is a heathen woman, period. And that's the mother of Rehoboam. Now watch this. Matthew 1 and 1. The book of the generation of Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shai, the son of David, the son of Abraham. And let's just go to verse 7. And Solomon begat Rehoboam, and Rehoboam begat Abiah. So as we see, Rehoboam is in the lineage of who the world calls Christ, Yahweh Shai. Wait a minute. Rehoboam had an Ammonite mother, and... It says an Ammonite shall not enter into the congregation even to his 10th generation. Shall never enter in the congregation. So if we employ the logic that Deuteronomy 23 and 2, 3 and 7 and 8 are all talking about somebody being mixed with a woman from one of these nations, that means that Christ could not enter into the congregation. But didn't he go into the temple at 12 years old and confound everybody? Didn't he go into the temple and kick them tables over? Okay, so we're saying that anybody, that any woman that is a non-Israelite that has children that are, that I guess, are also non-Israelite, then what we're saying is the scripture in Isaiah 11 about the root of Jesse is null and void because if you if you look at the lineage of Judah from the beginning, you go all the way down before you get to Jesse, you'll see that's already been tainted with a non-Israelitish woman, a Canaanitish woman multiple times, and a Moabite woman. So therefore, Jesse can't be of the line of Judah. And no Messiah can come because King David is not an Israelite. William, this pre-preaching of the gospel of the coming of Jesus Christ, that it would make sense that he would set about to try to cut that off. How do you stop the coming of this prophesied one? And the way you would do that would be you would try to contaminate that bloodline. Because, frankly, if the bloodline leading to the time of Christ became genetically corrupted, then no Messiah would have been able to be born and mankind would be damned forever. And that would be, that would be Lucifer's motive, That's or right. Satan's motive, to try to stop that.
was interrupting my kung fu. Who the hell is this? The king of Assyria sent in priests. It doesn't say priest plural. It says priest. In the book of Josephus, it records priests plural. You have ten Samaritans being healed, but only one returned back. Yeah. Not all of the Samaritans were true seed of Israel. Yeah. Only those who were from the priests that came into that land. You understand that? Yeah. So who do you think will legitimately have the right to, to come back and go to the priests? Not the true sons of Abraham? Yeah. Yeah. The Bible is trying to tell us something. Let's, let's see if we can extract that truth from it. Scram! Scram! I said split! Shake the scene, you turkeys! Get out of my house! But what is the iniquity? Because it's not an iniquity that says, if you marry any woman that's not an Israelite, that's a sin. That's not nowhere in the Torah. But there is a, like the, like the book of Romans says, where there is no law, there is no sin. That's so right. if you can't go in a law and show me that it's a sin, you can't tell me that he don't F with it, as you said. The mm -hmm. commandment in the law that says you have to do that. That's my point. Give me um, Psalms 147 and two. They, they, they said they're confused now. They're like, oh, we can, I can marry an Eden woman now? The escalation of the Finnahation priesthood, my final point of taking the Finnahation covenant as an everlasting covenant is crucial for the expression in accordance with the salvation history, as well as for the focal point in connecting the old covenant congregations to worship under the new covenant assembly. The continuity of priesthood as the progressive plan of God, see figure A2, is the key in preparing Jesus' salvation for Israel. Ezra's primary concern was the preservation of the messianic line. In his view the Holy Seed is a reference to the line of the Messiah. Because it's not an iniquity that says if you marry any woman that's not an Israelite, that's a sin. That's not nowhere in the Torah. Because it's not an iniquity that says if you marry any woman that's not an Israelite, that's a sin. That's not nowhere in the Torah. of my people will have to live with this disfigurement. It'll be passed on to our children. Life won't be easy for us. <laughs> <laughs>